PNR Networks is a member of Patreon. Show your love for our shows by joining our ongoing fundraising campaign and get some fantastic perks in return. Check it out and become a Patreon sponsor. You can sign up at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, backslash PNR Networks. And thanks for your support. Do you ever feel like you're normal and the rest of the world has lost its collective mind? Put your helmet on, we'll be reaching speeds of three. Do you find people saying this to you a lot? Are you totally deranged? Are you looking for a looking glass to pass through? I find your lack of faith disturbing. Or looking for a rabbit hole to fall down? Who could think of a better punishment, really? Everything's the same here, it's just a little worse. Guess what? Life's a bitch. Now so am I. You found it. (laughs) Welcome to Platinum Rose's Garden. Hello, my darlings. This is Platinum Rose Lady. Welcome you to Platinum Rose's Garden on... Oh my gosh, we're in 2019. I don't believe it. We made it this far. Hooray! Isn't that awful that we're like, yay, we haven't blown ourselves up yet. Woohoo! Party time. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, though. It's 2019 and we still don't have flying cars. We don't have flying cars. We don't have transporters. We don't have lightsabers. We don't have lightsabers. I really... Pit- no, I tell a lie. I take that back. We have lightsabers. We just don't don't have working lightsabers specifically i don't have a working lightsaber and i really 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 want one to be accurate i want that you know two-pronged sucker that darth maul had that thing was badass um i hope everybody had a lovely holiday uh christmas new year's kwanzaa you know uh, winter solstice yule festivus hanukkah I, did I mention everything? I think I got everything in there. Um, hopefully I did. Um, and here in Massachusetts, we had our actual first real honest to goodness. We're not fucking around snow this weekend. Um, and ice. So yay. So, (laughs) so it's just trying to stay inside and not go outside and not fall and break something, you know, (laughs) <laughs> love winter in New England. Love it, love it, love it. I keep telling myself that. Sooner or later, I'm going to believe it. Eventually, I don't know. Um, so, here we are. Um, back on the sh- Back here on my show. I hope, like I said, I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday, whatever you celebrate. And I hope everybody had a lovely New Year's. Um, and didn't get too hammered and, you know, <laughs> if you're old enough to get hammered, if you're, if you're old enough to drink, I hope you didn't get plastered. Actually, if you're old enough to drink, those are probably only the only people who should be listening to my podcast because I do tend to swear a whole fucking lot and I don't want to (laughs) be accused of, you know, teaching kids bad language, although I think they probably know more swears than I do anymore. Um, so before we really get started with the show and, um, the amazingness of this past week's episode, which I'm still shaking from. Um, I have something of an apology that I would like to um, extend to someone very special and important to me who doesn't know I'm doing this, so it's going to be a real friggin' surprise to him. Um, to my husband, my Imzadi, the cream in my coffee, the apple in my eye, the Robin to my Batman, the peanut butter to my jelly, um, I can't think of anything else, the uh, ash to my Pikachu, I don't know, anyway, um, my my husband TC, who who is a sweet, kind, wonderful, forgiving person, um, <laughs> um, and now he's going, what the fuck did she break? Um, no, it's not that. I wanted to apologize to him because I saw this commercial on TV and I was like, oh, wow, he'll get a big kick out of that because um, TC loves music. He loves all kinds of music. He's like the person to go to for music. No matter how obscure it is, he probably knows who it is or can find out for you because he's really smart like that. So, and he loves music from the 70s. Um, 
I love him anyway. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> wow, that was bitchy. I mean, I love music from the 70s too, but, you know, like, you know, Aerosmith and Kiss and stuff like that. And he likes stuff that's not Aerosmith and Kiss. I mean, he likes some of it, but any anyway, moving forward, he likes a lot of stuff that I tend to be kind of like, you know, eye roll, you know, like the Pina Colada song and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's a commercial um, that Dunkin' Donuts is running right now that is a man and a woman. They're singing together, and the whole set is set up very 70s, and it's a very 70s-sounding song. It's just a silly little commercial. And I saw it, and I was like, oh, gosh, when I show him this, he'll think it's really funny. And I showed him the commercial, and the second I showed him the commercial, I was like, oh, crap, I fucked up. Because... He didn't laugh. He didn't smile. He just kind of got this look on his face, and he was like, why are they trying to make that woman sound and look like Karen Carpenter? And I realized, oh, fuck, what did I just do? Um, the reason I realized that is because TC is a, a, a very, very passionate Karen Carpenter fan. He was an enormous fan of the Carpenters and really, really thought Karen was a special you know, beautiful human being, which she was, you know, Karen Carpenter was a beautiful, beautiful person and an amazing singer and was taken from us way too young. And I I thought that he'd find this really cute and funny and stuff like that. And when I saw the look, he wasn't upset or anything, but he was just kind of like, and I was like, oh, you fucked up again, Kim. So, um, I would like to extend my apologies to him because I thought I was being funny, showing him something that he would find funny, and it irked him. And he has enough stress in his life, so I felt bad. So I didn't say anything at the time, but now in front of God in the world, I'm saying, I'm sorry, babe. So hopefully that gets me out of out of trouble. Um, and just, just as a side note, honey, I didn't break anything. So I, I really haven't broken or destroyed or burned anything, so don't worry. Not that I can remember anyway. So moving forward, um, on to this week's recommendation of the week. I have a fun recommendation for you guys, and I hope you'll check it out. Okay, uh, my recommendation for this week is a little bit more of a niche thing. I decided that I'm going to try and, you know, branch out a little bit. I still want to recommend fanfics, and if you guys have a fan fiction uh, piece or if you have a fan fiction writer that you would like to uh, hype up, send them my in- you know, send my information to them, or send me their information, and I'll definitely you know give them a shout out and stuff like that, and hopefully people will discover their stuff because we all want everybody to read everybody's stuff and be creative because creativity is awesome. But I want to branch out a little bit and talk about you know books and music and. TV and videos that I like and stuff like that, because I want to share that with you. If I find something that I like, I want to share it with you, you out there in the ether of the interwebs and all the computer shit that I don't get. Um, So this week's recommendation actually leads into one of the other shows that I do on our little island of misfit toys. Um, I am a wrestling fan and have been for (laughs) years because I've actually hit a milestone birthday, the last birthday. And no, I'm not going to tell you what it was. Um, But I've been a wrestling fan since high school. Gulp. Um, And (laughs) that's a long time ago. Um... So I've been, you know, a fan for a number of years. And since, you know, the Internet came along, you know, there's a very big Internet wrestling community out there. And I am actually part of it with Ring Around the Rosie, my wrestling podcast, which I hope you will take a listen to or recommend to somebody who is a wrestling fan if you like. It's a very dippy, silly, my stream of consciousness stuff so you know what you're getting into. But other people out there have uh, other cool sites that have to do with wrestling. And one of them happens to have a YouTube channel that I would like to tell you about. Uh, the channel is called Wrestling with Regret, um, w- with regret spelled with a W because reasons, because uh. <laughs> it looks better, to be honest. Um, it is a site that is uh, done by a gentleman named Brian Zane on YouTube. Uh, Brian is obviously a very passionate wrestling fan, which is great. And he is also involved in wrestling. He's been a manager. He's also gotten in the ring. So he actually is someone that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, wrestling fans don't know what they're talking about because they've never worked in the business, blah, 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 blah. Um, and 
he has. So he gets to say he can actually comment on stuff. I think Brian is really, really funny and very knowledgeable. Uh, he does a lot of videos about terrible gimmicks in wrestling. He does. He also does. He, uh, not all of his videos are negative. Uh, even his negative videos are funny. But he does positive videos too. He talks about pay per views and reviews classic pay per views that people recommend who you know take part in his Patreon. So if you want to check out a really cool wrestling site on YouTube, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, Wrestling with Regret. You can search that out on YouTube. Um, or, you know, Google it if that's your deal. Um, and go give him a like and subscribe. And if you do that, let him know that you heard about him here on Platinum Rose's Garden. So let's get to what you all came for this week's Supernatural episode recap. Grab your socks, kids. This is going to get nuts. <laughs> Season 14, Episode 10 of Supernatural, Nihilism. Then, the then segment is how we got to where we are this season. You know, the whole thing with Michael reneging on his deal with Dean and taking him over and Michael's plans to upgrade monsters in this world to wage war on humanity and all of the other terrible, awful things that have happened to our beloved Winchesters, Castiel and Jack so far this season because this show is trying to kill me. No. <laughs> Actually, no, I think it's trying to kill all of us, but I mean that in the nicest possible way. It's just so much stress. Um, also, the then deals with th the whole thing that happened in season nine when Sam unknowingly was possessed by the angel Gadriel and he finally expelled Gadriel from his, bo from his body once he was told that he was actually having an angel inside his head. Um, and also the thing that happened earlier this season of Jack dealing with his grace being stolen by Lucifer. Thanks. You know, thanks, Dad. Um, and Jack dying and coming back to life. But the thing is, Jack is right now being power. Anytime he uses magic, a little more of his soul burns away because his grace hasn't come back. And him just coming back burned up some of his soul, thanks to help from Lily Sunder. And also the whole thing about the snap, the other the other devastating snap from the last, you know, from from it 2018 and involving Michael snapping his fingers and setting the monsters loose on the world again once he takes control once he took control over Dean's body in the episode that ended the at the, at the end of episode nine, um, the spear. And now we're at now and, um, we, we see a bar, a bar called Rocky's bar. It's pouring rain outside and the bar is pretty much empty. There's one guy slumped over, slumped over in a corner of the bar and the bar is being tended by Dean and he looks fine. Uh, all of a sudden, the door opens up, and it's Pamela, Pamela Barnes, the psychic that tried to help uh, the Winchesters find out who Castiel was way back in season four, got her eyes burned out because she saw Cass's true form, and then wound up dying in in uh, the following season, I believe it was the following season. Um, and... I'm like, wait, what is going on with this? Um, she and Dean kind of talk back and forth. And, and I'm sorry, it was, it was, I'm sorry, Pamela died in, in season four as well in the episode Death Takes a Holiday. Sorry about that. Um, and she and Dean kind of talk and flirt and drink and, you know, everything seems to be fine. Um, this, you know, this woman comes into the bar. She's a businesswoman from the look of her she seems to be here on behalf of some like someone else or something trying to buy this bar from dean and dean says no and she winds up leaving um dean and pamela are sitting in the in the back room of the bar and they're sharing a drink and dean says that this bar is his dream 
and the hairs on the back of my neck start standing up. I may not have spidey sense, but I have I have some sense, in spite of what my parents thought. Um, as it turns out, though, this bar is not as uh, safe as it would seem because a guy comes into the bar. It turns out he's a vampire, and he's there to attack Dean, blaming Dean for massacring his nest. And it turns out the other guy in the bar is also a vampire. And before all of this happened, Cass and D- Cass and Sam are mentioned by Dean as being away on a ghoul hunt. So Dean and Pam easily dispatch the vampires, and this whole thing is just like, this isn't right. You know, <laughs> we're all sitting there as the audience going, this isn't right. And the second Dean said that this was his dream, like I said, every hair on the back of my neck stood up. I was like, oh, fuck. As it turns out, in the real world, let's go with that for now, whatever the real world is, um, Michael is taking time. To, Michael really has a whole supervillain vibe going. Um, he has he has Cass, Sam, and Jack like fall to their knees in pain because of whatever he's doing to them. Um, and he's basically taunting them. He's telling them that they had no hope of winning and, you know, they brought the spear to him and he's destroyed that now. And the thing is, you know, the Winchesters and Cass, they won't give up. Um, Sam manages to um, splash splash um, Michael, let's just say Michael, although it is Dean's body, with, with, holy, with holy fire. And uh, Cass snaps on some augmented angel cuffs and they actually work, which is something that Michael seems to be pretty surprised that they work. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> douche nozzle. What do you think of that? The problem is that everything isn't going very well outside because as the the Winchesters and, and Cass and Jack can hear sirens, Michael did snap his fingers and get the things rolling for his plan of having his monsters, his augmented vampires and werewolves and who knows what else he's got out there to infect people and... um Instead of killing them, he wants to infect them and get, like, an an army of monsters. And we hear sirens out there, and, and, you know, Michael's kind of gloating about the fact that his monsters are out there attacking people. And there's some monsters coming to get them now. Um, And so Sam gets the idea to call for Jessica, the reaper that Billy assigned to them, Billy, a.k.a. Death, assigned a reaper to keep an eye on the Winchesters. Her name was Jessica. Sam keeps calling for her, but all of a sudden there's another woman there who is a reaper, and she says her name is Violet. Um, She explains to Sam that they have to watch the Winchesters in shifts now because they keep messing things up. (laughs) And I don't know. That might have been a compliment. I'm not really sure. It's like they're that important that they need to have shifts now. The problem is that, unfortunately, for a second, I think everybody except Michael thinks that uh, Sam's lost his mind because neither Cass nor Jack can see um, Violet. But it turns out that Michael can. Michael also brings up that in on his version of earth what what we you know we've taken to calling apocalypse world uh he he and his angels had captured death and had enslaved all the reapers uh violet seems very nonplussed by his remarks um sam is pleading for her to help get them out of there zap them out get them back to the bat cave do something and while she says that she's she's very you know happy to offer him emotional support yay she can't she can't and won't help them get out that even if she wanted to she wasn't allowed to because reapers aren't allowed to interfere until she kind of turns her head like she's listening to someone and then all of a sudden everybody's back at the bat cave when sam goes to thank her she says it wasn't her idea and she disappears uh michael winds up being chained to a pillar um, and still being a snarky fuckwad as much as possible, while Sam and uh, Jack and Cass try to figure out what the hell they're going to do to fix this and to you know get to get Michael out of Dean's head without 
you know, rendering Dean a complete vegetable. Uh, Sam brings up what happened with him when he was possessed by Gadriel back in season nine, which, you know, he didn't know he was possessed by Gadriel for a while. And that the whole thing, how Crowley had gotten into his head and told him what to do to exercise the angel. But of course, Crowley's dead. So that doesn't really help. Um, Maggie calls Sam and tells him that, uh, the monsters, which the Maggie and the other, some of the other hunters were on their way in to try and help Sam out. She tells him that the monsters are now leaving. They're, they're leaving Kansas city and they're headed west right toward the bat cave because Michael has summoned them to come and rescue him. Sam gets left alone with Michael for a minute and Michael's just completely screwing with Sam as much as possible while Cass and Jack try to fortify keeping monsters out and stuff like that. And Michael lays some real mental warfare on Sam by telling him, yeah, yes, put a chair against the door. That'll help. Nothing's changed. Either my monsters get here or I break these chains. But tonight, everybody dies. And Sam, the last thing you'll see is this pretty smile before I rip you apart. And the look on Sam's face just broke me. It just broke me because he's... These words of venom and hatred and cruelty are being said in a voice that he's known since he was born. And they're being spoken through lips and on on a face that he's seen his whole life in a body that he's known. And, you know, his, his brothers held him when he was a child, protected him when he was a teen, fought side by side with him when he was an adult. And now this thing is inside his brother saying he's going to kill him. I can't even imagine what Sam is going through right now. Um, Sam gets the machine that the British men of letters left behind. It was the machine that um, Lady Tori... (coughs) Sorry. (laughs) Need your reaction. Bitch, I'm glad you're dead. Um, the, uh, the character, the character, not the actress. I'm sure she's a lovely lady, but I was really happy. My only disappointment with Tori's death was we didn't get to see it. Um, the machine that she used to both brainwash Mary and also to get Dean inside Mary's head to break her of the brainwashing. Um, Sam, Sam thinks that somehow this is something that they can use to get inside Dean and get him to do whatever he needs to do to throw Michael out of his body. Um, we keep, we, we go back inside Dean's dream and we keep seeing little snippets of what we've seen before. Dean drinking with Pam. Dean telling this lady to fuck off that wants to buy his bar. Dean just being happy in this dream world that he's in right now. But when something gets said and Dean has the, he kind of stops and he has, he mentions that he's got this really large feeling of deja vu. And, you know, (laughs) didn't that just set off that spark of hope in all of us for going, yes, Dean, please break out of this. You can do it. We love you because I'm a Samazon, but I can be a Dean diva too. I'm a switch. Take that however you want to. Um, <laughs> back in the real world. Now Michael is real. And then before I was like, you know, I really hate you. Now I'm like, I really fucking hate you. Because Michael starts playing these mind games with Jack. Because he Jack's been left to keep an eye on Michael. And I'm like, you fucking... The, the the things that he says to to Jack telling him that Dean Dean was sad when when Jack died but inside of Dean's deepest feelings he didn't care about Jack because Jack isn't Sam and Jack isn't Cass that Jack was a burden that he's that he's weak 
and that he's he doesn't he doesn't have any emotional attachment when it comes to the Winchesters or cast that none of them love him that they just view him as a job and all this stuff like that and I'm sitting there going you know what I don't care if you're wearing Dean's face right now right now I want to grab a sledgehammer and do my best Triple H impression on your face um thankfully Castiel shows up and and when Castiel basically is like get away from him and Castiel tells Jack not to believe anything Michael tells him and I really hope Michael did not get into Jack's head because we know, we know that's not true. I, I don't believe it is. I believe that Jack means a great deal to Sam and Dean, and I know he means the world to Cass. So, you know, I'm like, you fucking motherfucker. I mean, I feel really weird swearing about an angel like that but i'm like you're not my you're not my archangel that's that's all i know hashtag not my archangel um we see we uh see maggie and the other hunters that were in the van with her um waiting for the other monsters for the monsters to show up you know trying to keep them trying to be a barrier between them and the bat cave um now we have Castiel having an extraordinarily nasty war of words with Michael. With I love Michael asking Cass why he loves this world so much that he's willing to risk dying for it. And I love Cass's response and how he throws it right back in Michael's face by saying, Tell me, why do you hate this world enough to burn it to the ground? And Michael's answer of because I can... That just pretty much sums up Michael. This apocalypse world, Michael, is no better than the Winchester, the Winchester's world version of Lucifer. He's a brat. He's, he's a, he's a child breaking toys because he feels like daddy didn't pay enough attention to me. His whole thing is, his whole villain rant is because he tells, he tells Cass how he and Lucifer, when they actually did fight, which, didn't happen in the Winchester's world because Sam and Dean are awesome. They thought that because they fought that God would come back and tell them, you know, anything, tell them what was going on, why he had left, why they, what, you know, had they done something to make him leave, but nothing happened. God never came back. Um, Michael goes on to say that God is a writer, he also calls God Chuck, and that writers, you know, when they write, they, not everybody, you know, keeps everything they write the first time, you know, when you're a writer, and I'm, I'm a writer, and I know there's other people out there that are writers too, you all know how how it is, you write something, and then you look at it, and you're like, no, I don't like that, so you get rid of it, and you write it again, and you write it again, and you might write it six more times, or you write, might write it 600 more times, before you're finally like, that's it, it, I've done it, and then you send it off to the publisher, or you post it on the internet, and then you lie awake all night going, no, I should have changed this, this, and this. I really hope that Chuck doesn't do that. Um... The thing is, Michael's whole thing is that he says that his world, the world that he's on right now, are nothing but more of God's failed drafts. That when God realizes that the the world that he's created is not perfect, he just goes on to, he basically, you know, takes a notebook, tears out the page and starts writing again. Um, for those of us who were brought up to believe God is infallible, you know, I'm sitting there going, I, I don't think that's how it works. But um, when Castiel asks why God would do that, Michael's answer is that God doesn't care, which, ironically enough, is the same sidebar. Um, ironically enough, um, if you're Catholic, that's that's what I, I that's what I've been taught in church is that's. That's the devil's whole shtick. That's that's the devil's whole way of tempting people to be bad. Oh, God doesn't love you. God doesn't care about you and stuff like that. Live for this world, not for the next, because God doesn't care. That's how they talk about it in my church anyway. Uh, that's, that, that, that's how the devil gets you to do bad stuff. Um, back to the show. Um, Michael says that God doesn't care about anything 
and that at first he thought that he would take over and he would be God and do a better job than God. But he says that he's changed his mind about that and what he wants to do now is possibly even worse because, I mean, it, is it possibly, is it possible to be worse than the devil? Because the devil's whole thing is I want to be better than God, at least according to him. And Michael's whole thing now is that he wants to destroy all of the worlds God makes until he catches up to God. And when Castiel asks what happens after that, Michael looks at him with a look of pure hatred in his eyes and says, even God can die. And those are four of the most chilling words I've ever heard. And hearing Jensen Ackles use them and use, and just the line, I couldn't even do that line half the justice that he does. And I was just like, I mean, I was, I had chills just running completely down my back. It was an awesome scene. Misha and Jensen just completely knocked it out of the park. It was fucking amazing. Um, uh, back outside in the woods, um, the the hunters have found the van that the monsters were in, but it turns out the van's empty. So the monsters have apparently fled into the woods, and they're still on their way to the bunker and uh, the bat cave. Um, Jack wants to use part of his soul. He wants to try and use his magic or the power that he does have now to to help Dean. And Castiel says no. That's you know I'm I'm. You know, and it's like, that's not, no, not gonna, I'm sorry, Sam. It was Sam. Sorry. I'm, I'm reading my notes and my eyes are jumping ahead. Sorry. Uh, Sam tells him, no, no, you, you don't want to do that. Dean wouldn't want you to do that. And Dean wouldn't want to be saved like that. Um, so they wind up connecting Michael up to this machine and Sam is connected to the other part of the machine. And Castiel is going to help him maneuver and help them, hopefully help them to get Dean to expel um, Michael and hopefully not have Dean be, you know, just a drooling mess of wreck of a human being once it's done. Um, the machine flicks on and Sam and Cass are in this dark space. It's It almost looked like the empty for a second and I'm like, oh fuck, no, not again. Um, it was just, this is this dark it's not a room. It's just, there's no, you know, it's just this dark void for lack of a better term. And, um, Cass says that they're inside Dean's mind and, um, Cass starts scanning his mind and we can hear all of these echoes of what Dean has gone through and, and the pain that he's gone through. And you know, we're hearing, we're hearing stuff from all different seasons and, you know, like the, 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 and it was awful. I mean, it was just so awful. You know, he's just hearing Dean screaming, like when he was in hell and all the other things, when he, when Sam died back in, in season two and all the other things, it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't fucking deal with this. And Sam realizes that Sam brings up how before Dean mentioned that, when, when he had been possessed by Michael the first time, when Michael reneged on his deal, that he kept, he kept, um, Dean from fighting him by making him feel like he was drowning. But that Dean kept fighting him. And Sam realizes that maybe this time he, Michael isn't, he, he isn't, um, forcing Dean down by using something bad that if he wanted to keep Dean distracted so that Dean wouldn't keep trying to break free that he would want to give him something that Dean's never had be part of his life something and Castiel realizes what what D- Sam's talking about and, and says contentment and so they decide instead of looking through the bad experiences Dean has had to look through the good experiences Dean has had. So it's, so Cass starts this scanning thing that he's doing again. And as they're hearing 
things that aren't, you know, full of pain and blood and terrible stuff like that. Um, they hear, Sam hears something that he hadn't heard before. It's something that he didn't remember. So, the, something about Rockies. And that's what he tells Cass that they need to focus on that. So Castiel's eyes flash that blue-white color, and all of a sudden he and Sam are in Rocky's bar. And Dean sees them, you know, sees them there, and he's really happy to see them and that they're back from their from their hunt. Um and just both Cass and Sam are like, what the fuck? Where are we? Um Dean offers them some reason. He got a really nice beer from Austin. It's an IPA from Austin. And I'm like, that's cute. The beers they keep bringing up are actually beers that are available at, um, the, the, the business that Dean, that, uh, Jensen is involved with. The, um, the, the, the brewery that he's involved with, which I'm just like, that's funny. That is just funny as fuck. I just loved it. I was like, that is awesome. Um, and, you know, they're trying to convince him that you know, this isn't right. This isn't, you know, where you're supposed to be and all this stuff like that. And all of a sudden there's Pamela and they're both, it's, the look on Sam and Cass's face. I mean, Cam, Cass doesn't do surprise very much, but um, it, they were both like, what the actual what? <laughs> the looks on their face was great. Um Sam's trying to get through to Dean that, you know, this isn't real. None of it's real. You're stuck inside your own head. But all of a sudden, Dean and Pam aren't there anymore. And then we start seeing this really weird shit where it's like, you know, they're fighting the vamps. They're back in the back. They're drinking. They're fighting the vamps again. And blood gets all over Sam and Sam and Cass. And it's like, it's very weird. But you realize what's happening is that the memories are all merging together. I was hoping they'd bring up the beer thing, uh, you know, the, the family business beer company, which is Jensen's beer company brewery, which is just fucking awesome. I mean, it's, it's very weird watching this scene get all kind of, it's all weird, but it really works really well. And, um, you know, Sam's pleading with, with Dean to remember that, you know, Michael's out there and this is, you know, everything's gone to shit and Michael's trapped you in your own head. But, um, Dean tells, you know, Dean's like, he's looking at Sam like, have you hit your head? You know, he's get this look on his face like, are you concussed? Um, he tell, and he tells them that he, as far as Dean knows, Michael is still in the cage. I'm like, wait, what Michael are you talking about? I was like, um, you mean the other Michael? The Michael that's, is still in a cage in hell somewhere that we don't know where? I don't know. Or who may or may not be insane. I don't know what... Are we ever going to see that Michael again? I'm not even sure I want to. I'm scared. Um, so, Sam... Um, and then Sam, like... I'm Because Pamela keeps throwing in things here and, here and there. And Dean finally starts to remember things when Sam makes him remember what really happened to Pamela how Pamela's eyes burnt out when she saw Castiel's true form and that she was blinded. And he looks over at Pam and now her eyes are all white because she had like plastic eyes put in or something, something, something fake put in her eye sockets because they were all burned out and it was gross. And when he like comments that she's blind and he's all, you know, he's kind of surprised at that. And she's very casual about it. She's just all like, you know, yeah, I've been blind for a while, thanks to Feathers over there, talking about Castiel. And then Dean has to hear the news again from Sam that Pamela's dead. You know, Pamela got killed because she was watching over Sam and Dean's bodies when they were in an astral form back in Death Takes a Holiday They that um, she got killed by a demon. Um, and when Dean looks again, Pamela's gone. That Pamela was part of the dream that Michael put together to keep Dean placated. Um, and you can tell that this is all starting to actually fall away from Dean. The, the haze of what's, what's happening to him is, 
finally starting to fall away from him. And when Sam leans in a little bit closer and says Poughkeepsie, it all comes rushing back to Dean. Everything that Michael had done while he was in Dean's body after he reneged on the deal between the two of them, the whole, you know, I'll kill Lucifer for you and all that stuff like that. Um, because Poughkeepsie was a code between Sam and Dean that um, Poughkeepsie meant its code for drop everything and run. Um, it was actually used, um, they used it in season nine in the episode Road Trip um, with Crowley getting that message to Sam so that he, you know, to, that something was wrong because he was trapped in his own head. And also Crowley using it again in season nine in the episode King of the Damned to warn Dean that something was going wrong, the whole thing with Abaddon and all that, and her plan and everything like that. And so Dean, the, the mist has finally fallen away from Dean's eyes and he remembers everything. And... Michael, we hear this this slow, sarcastic clap, and we realize that Michael is in there with them now. This is really not going to be good at all. We come back from commercial, and Dean tells Michael to get out of his head, and that doesn't... It's not as easy, apparently it's not as easy as it was for Sam to tell Gidriel to get the hell out of my head because Michael's still there. Michael tells him that he doesn't mean it, that, um, he tolerates, he, he, if you thought that the stuff that he was saying earlier on to, to Sam and to Jack and to Cass was bad, that was just a warm up for the venom that he dumps all over Dean. Um, cause he tells Dean that he, he tell, he, he's basically being like, I'm in your head. I know, I, I know how you really feel. And he's saying, he tells the, he tells all of them that, you know, that Dean only tolerates Cass because he feels like he owes him. Um, but that all that Cass has done since then is just keep screwing up. And that Sam, when it comes to Sam, that Dean was the that Dean's happiest point in his life was when Sam was gone, when Sam was at Stanford, when it was just Dean hunting with his dad, and the reason why that was his happiest time is because he because Michael is claiming that Dean feels like that Sam will always abandon him over and over, um, and Dean tells him to shut the fuck up, and. That doesn't shut Michael up at all. Michael tells, he's like, you don't need them. You don't even like them. They're not your family. They're your responsibilities. They're a weight around your neck. And deep down, you wanted, you were desperate to get away from them. And that is why you said yes. And I'm like, you fucking asshole. And the thing is, you can tell Michael, Michael really does fall into the supervillain category because he really underestimates the shit out of people and angels that he thinks he's better than because Cass, something's tweaking in Cass's head and he realizes that Michael, this isn't, he says something to the effect that Michael is stalling, that this isn't right, that Michael, for some reason, is stalling them. And, um, we cut back to the Bat Cave. Um, we had had a scene earlier on where Maggie and the other hunters were trying to find the monsters, but they had, they had disappeared into the woods. One of the hunters, a guy named Tiger, had gone into the woods by himself. Plot point: um, Maggie and the and the other hunters have made it into the have made it back to the Bat Cave before the monsters have. Back inside Dean's head. They, they realize what, what Michael's ploy is, that he is stalling. He's waiting for his monsters to show up, swarm the bat cave and rescue him because they need to rescue him because right now Michael is inside 
Dean's mind too. So when Dean throws in Michael's face, why don't you just kill us all right now? Like, you know, using your angel powers, they all, they all realize he can't because they're inside Dean's mind. But the problem is that while Michael can't kill them with his powers, Michael still is an accomplished physical fighter and can beat the shit out of all three of them, uh, which is what actually happens. Um, <laughs> not attractive. Um, back in, in the Batcave, um, it turns out that the hunter named Tiger who went into the woods by himself, yeah, he got infected and is now a monster. And lets the other monsters in. So it's a complete bloodbath between the the monsters and the hunters that are left, and Jack manages to destroy the monsters that don't that aren't killed by the hunters um, by using his power. He you know holds his hand out, tells them to stop, and it's just this golden light, and the monsters are obliterated. And it also, I and you can tell that this isn't, yay, Jack got his grace back and everything's going to be fine now. No, this is, holy fuck, Jack used his powers when he really shouldn't have and now more of his soul has been burned away. Holy fuck, this is bad. Um, <laughs> um, Michael, we were back inside Rockies and Michael, like I said, it's the whole supervillain thing, is gloating over the fact that he's now kicked the crap out of Dean and Sam and Cass. But as Mike, as Dean's realized, you know, because they are in his head, all of them, that includes Michael, he can trap Michael in his head. Because Michael's whole thing is that even if you do kick him out, there's not going to be anything left of Dean. Then so Dean says, "Then we don't kick him out; we keep him in." And he he grabs at Michael to thr to try and throw him into the storage room that's part of Rocky's bar. But when Michael throws him to the ground, Sam takes advantage of that distraction and shoves Michael into the storage into the storage room, and Dean locks the door. And you can tell Michael thinks he's going to be able to open this door super easy, but as it turns out, he can't. He starts pounding on the door. He starts screaming, but the door won't open. And outside the door, Dean's got the door shut and locked, even though it's being pounded on furiously. And he says, my mind, my rules. I got him. I'm the cage. I'm like this. While this is awesome, this is also a very, very frightening concept. Um, Maggie, back in the real world, um, obviously we see you know Sam and Dean woke up and Cass woke up and everything's okay, as okay as it can be now that Dean has a uh, arc, an angry archangel locked in a storeroom in a bar inside his head. That has to be the strangest phrase I've used all day. Um, Maggie reports to to Sam that um, the monsters that you know were in Kansas City and all that were still in Kansas City and all they're just leaving. They just once Michael was locked away inside Dean's head, he his control over them was broken, and they just left. They just went back to wherever it was that they they came from. Now, I do have to wonder if that means that the augmentation has gone away as well or just the control. And also the simple fact of, is Garth still in the trunk? Because if he's in the trunk, he's probably not real happy. Um, Maggie brings up about Sam... Maggie brings up to Sam about Jack using his powers and that she didn't know that he got his angel powers back and Sam's being like, yeah, I didn't know that either with this kind of whole, I'm not going to tell her what's actually going on because I don't want to lay that on her because she kind of likes Jack and oh crap, this is going to be bad. Um, we see Castiel sitting with Jack in the kitchen and Jack 
being, I wouldn't say lectured. I, I won't go as far as to call it lectured, but Cass is definitely doing the dad thing. You know, like, I'm not mad at you and all that stuff like that. But he's, he's almost pleading with Jack, don't use your powers again because you need to keep your soul in one piece. He's seen what happens with people without a soul, i.e. Sam, you know, and also the fact that he needs his soul to be alive. Um, and Cass kind of leaves him with this very fatherly pat on the shoulder. And Jack said he won't use his powers anymore, that he promises and stuff like that. But you can tell that Michael's words really got to him. And I really wanted him to ask, I really wanted him to ask Castiel, was like, do you really think of me as a burden or something like that? Just so Cass could be like, no, I don't. I really care about you or something like that because I want everybody to be happy, damn it. I'm just, I can't help it. I want to fix things. I'm a fixer. I can't help it. Um, we see Dean inside of his room. Um, standing in front of a mirror, basically saying it's, he's just repeating to himself, almost like a mantra that it's just, it's just him. He's in control. It's just him. As we see inside of his head, inside of the storeroom, that, um, you know, Michael's pounding on the door. He's throwing things. He's screaming. It's, it's kind of like a cross between a child throwing a tantrum and a wild animal caught in a cage. And then it turns out that, Dean isn't alone. I mean, he's alone and he's in the, he's not alone because all of a sudden there's Billy, a.k.a. Death. Um, Billy's there and uh, she's got some news and she's also not really happy with what's been going on. But Dean does thank her for letting her, her Reaper help them out. Um, she does mention she took a risk about dealing with the Winchesters and about, you know... She had warned Dean about the whole thing about that you shouldn't jump worlds, it's too dangerous, but that, you know, Dean ignored what she said. And Dean's response to that is that, you know, they had to rescue their mom, they had to rescue Jack, and they had to get those other people off that other awful world and that he feels like it was worth it. And it was. Um, The thing is, and the reason that Billy's here is also the fact that she wanted to tell Dean some other interesting news. She asks Dean to remember about her reading room. Um, Billy's reading room was a, a room that she has where she has books as the new, as the new incarnation of death. She has all of these books that have, um, in them, um, the details about how every person on planet earth could die and that, you know, the, the choices that people make throughout the lives that they live can wind up influencing which book is the book that, you know, that shows what their end is going to be. We first saw this reading room in, um, in season 13 episode advanced third talk excuse me <laughs> i'm sorry i had a little uh sniff there in season 13 episode 5 advanced thanatology the thing is billy tells dean that because of what they've done and this whole thing with michael that the ending of dean's books the ending of dean in the books have all been changed that they all have only one ending now. That according to the all of these books, Dean's end is that Michael takes over his body again and burns the world to the ground. Um, I'm assuming that means Michael takes control of Dean's body and then somehow destroys Dean inside of his own head. I don't know. The thing is, when Dean asks her if that's everything, all of the books, she says that it is all of them except one, which she has in her hand, which she holds out to Dean. Dean takes the book, opens it up to the last page, looks at whatever it says, and gets this look on his face of complete, what the fuck did I just read? 
He looks up at Billy and he says, what am I supposed to do with this? And Billy replies, that's up to you. And then she disappears. And she, but she does leave the book with Dean, who looks completely and utterly stunned. And the episode ends. Because of course we don't get to see what the book says, because fuck our lives! Oh my gosh. Uh, whoever on the writing crew was a big fan of Avengers Infinity War, you have great taste in movies, but you're just going to drive me to drink. Ah! This episode was fucking awesome. Uh, Nihilism gets five bouquets out of five from me. Just an incredible episode. So amazing. So awesome. Just super work from absolutely everybody. It was really, really, really awesome to see some people that we haven't seen for quite a while, which was great, including seeing um, uh, Tracy Dinwiddle back as uh, Pamela Barnes, which was awesome because Tracy's a really awesome person. I actually got to meet her at the Boss Con all those years ago. Um, she's just awesome and really a nice person. And also... Um, Always, always wonderful to see the fantabulous and great Lisa Berry, who uh, is just rocking it as death. She's just fantastic as death. And, you know, I mean, every year I'm like, why is Supernatural never up for an Emmy for acting? Why, 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 why? And, I mean, I've brought it up before about Jensen Ackles, about how um, the episode from um, from season four... Um, heaven and hell, where you have that whole scene at the end where he's talking about, you know, all the things he went through in hell and stuff like that. And I've always said, I've always been like, you know, that scene that Jensen didn't win an Emmy for that he totally should have. Again, if, if Jensen Ackles is not nominated for a fucking Emmy this year for this episode, there's no fucking justice in the world. Of course, if there was justice in the world, then Chris Evans would have shown up on my doorstep dressed in the Captain America outfit for my birthday. But as the Rolling Stones said, as the Rolling Stones sang, you can't always get what you want. Um, moving forward. Moving forward to this coming week's episode of Supernatural Damaged Goods. Yeah, that's not boding well for our, our lovely Dean, is it? We know that Dean is going to be recovering from what he's been through and we know that something is going on with Nick and that Sam has to make a really terrible decision. What does all of that mean? Fuck if I know. I guess we're all going to find out together and all of us have breakdowns. Yay, therapy! Okay, um, before I rabbit on out of here, cats and kittens, I just wanted to mention a few other things real quick, including the fact that we do have a Patreon set up, and I hope you will go check that out, and you can find out all the links and all that good computer stuff in my notes for this uh, show. And I hope you will check out all of the other amazing, wonderful things that are out there as part of the interwebs that we are involved with here on Subject Cinema, uh, on our Popcorn and Roses channel, on our little island of misfit toys. Um, and if you would like to write to me about anything, you can write to me at PlatinumRosel at Yahoo.com. I will totally love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter at PlatinumRosel at Twitter.com. You can check out my fanfic on fanfiction.net. Look for Platinum Rose Lady in the author search section. And as I mentioned, we have other shows out there that if you are so inclined, it'd be lovely if you could listen to them, if you could like them, if you could subscribe to them and recommend them to other people. If you're, as I've said, if you're so bent, um, I know I'm bent. So anyway, moving forward, um, there is my other wrestling, my other podcast that I mentioned, my wrestling podcast, Ring Around the Rosie, which is going to be a bi-weekly thing from now on because I have another site that's going to be coming up this week. It's coming up called Kaiju 
corner. Um, it's going to be a Patreon uh, site, pay-only site for $5. Uh, I have been a monster movie fan since I was a very tiny child, and uh, kaiju movies have always held a special place in my heart. I am a definite fan of the big G, uh, a.k.a. Godzilla, and hopefully you guys will come check out my show. It's going to be rambling. It's going to be stream of consciousness. It's going to be wicked silly. In other words, it's me. Yay! Um, there is our other show, Subject Cinema, which is our movie podcast that TC and I have been doing for more than 10 years. Holy cow. It's a lot of fun and silly. Sometimes we get serious, but for the most part, we both feel like there's enough serious shit out there in the world. We just want to have fun. And, um, there are some other, uh, smaller shows. TC has two smaller shows that he does every week. Small in, in size, but not small in importance, because they are super important. Uh, they would be Tuesday Digidex and Three Minute Weekend. Those are his podcasts where he is talking about movies coming out this week on, you know, in the theater, on the internet, on Redbox, on on demand, all of those places where you know, so you know where to spend your coinage. And we also have Front Row 5 and 10, which is our list show, which we do lists about all kinds of fun things. And if you'd like to suggest a topic for a list, please send it to me at PlatinumRoselle.com and I will totally will totally do it. He has another show as well, his solo show, uh, Catastrophe Vortex, because TC is a disaster movie junkie and very knowledgeable about that sort of stuff. I am not because I am paranoid enough as it is. Uh, but it's a fun show and he's really terrific. We have other members of our little family, including Eric and Valerie, the Lion family, and their show Cave Babel, which is an awesome show. And there is the incredible Anthony Lamberti. His name is just so fun to say. Um, and he's a great person, and he has a show on YouTube called Ampy's Nerd Grotto. You can check him out. And if you are of a more dramatic frame of mind, uh, we, we here at the... Um, Pla- uh, uh, Popcorn and Roses family have put together two dramatic pieces. Uh, one of them is called Hammer Down um, As It Happened, which is what happened the night that a monster came out of uh, New York Harbor, as shown in the movie Cloverfield. This is looking at what else happened in town. It's Project Hammer Down As It Happened. We also did our own spin on the H.G. Wells classic, The War of the Worlds, for Halloween. So you can check both of those out if you like. If you do like them, please leave us a comment so we'll know if you like them, because we're looking into doing some other stuff, hopefully later on this year. Um, as I mentioned, if you could like, share, and subscribe to all of our stuff, that would be great. As I mentioned, we do have a Patreon. You can check all that stuff out in the technical stuff that TC is going to put on this uh, stuff for this podcast because he's awesome at it. And if I can turn on the computer and not have it explode, it's been a good day. So there's that. So that is wrapping things up here for another week. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed my show. And I hope you will come back next week and for the rest of this season. Uh, I'm Kim Brown, a.k.a. Platinum Rose Lady, saying uh, I hope you enjoyed your time in my garden and make sure you love the ones you hug, hug the ones you love, and take some time to stop and smell the roses. I'll see you around. Bye-bye now. Podcasting's choice. From coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24-7. 